Hi there, welcome. Welcome to Home Keepers. Hey, come right on in, my friend. It's such a delight to uh, be a part of this program, this ministry, and to know that you're on the other side of that camera. And uh, we try to get out every kind of information possible uh, to make your life better and also to inform you about what's going on around the world, especially in the Christian world. And that's what we're talking about today. So I think you'll want to really stay close to your TV or whatever uh, facility you're watching this uh, program because we're going to talk about what's going on around the world. And uh, in fact, my guest, uh, Paul Harlan Popoff, is going to be in shadow. We're not going to show his face. Uh, because it could uh, create some problems down the road. He's li literally all around the world, especially in those difficult situations where he could be in danger. He is the son of Harlan Popoff, who uh, this is the story of his life, tortured for his faith. And uh, this gentleman was uh, snatched from his home, a pastor in Bulgaria, and taken into prison for 15 years and tortured. And my guest today was five years old when his daddy was taken out. Uh, but this ministry survives. It's going to thrill you to know that the church is really alive and well, even in some of the most horrible places in the world. So uh, you're going to really, uh, I think, stay riveted to your screen on this one. And I'm going to join Stephanie in a minute for something that is so pretty. It's called a strawberry sorbet sensation. Maybe the easiest dessert you'll ever make and maybe the prettiest and maybe the one that tastes the best. I, before I join her, though, I think we've offered you this once before, this darling, colorful, colorful bracelet. And it is available. Uh, you can call us at 1-800-229-0059 or... Uh, write to us for that gift of $19. We'll get it right out to you because uh, we've got them in stock. And you can write to us at Home Keepers, Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758. Or call us uh, with your credit card, uh, debit card, uh, however is most convenient for you. And you don't have yours on today, Stephanie. I don't have one. <laughs> oh, I thought I gave you one. No, ma'am. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Well, we've got something really pretty here today. Yes. And all it takes is sorbet. Mm -hmm. That's I, already made. Don't you think um, sherbet would probably work? Sure. Just sherbet. Mm -hmm. Some, uh, something fruity and mm -hmm. colorful. Mm -hmm. And topping and pudding and milk pudding. that's it so while you take the sorbet mm -hmm. and you're mm -hmm. just going to put it in the bottom you're, you lined a pan with aluminum foil yeah yep. and you're going to just put the sorbet in the bottom and spread it out i'm going to take some pudding and milk a package of um, vanilla pudding and a cup of cold milk and i'm just going to whisk it together mm -hmm. for a second. actually for two minutes is what it calls for but you know we're not doing it for two minutes well um you know stephanie is the Ultimate family girl. Well, she she is the best. You know she likes family to come and all. And um, I think the last time we talked to you, your brother was here, and you were taking him everywhere around. Yep, I took him up to the sponge docks. We took him to Bass Pro Shop, of course. You know because he's a hunter, and we have that big Bass Pro Shop in Tampa. So we did that, and my husband took him hunting, and and you did get something. Uh, my my brother's friend got a turkey, got a wild turkey. A wild turkey. Yeah. Uh, Which the breast meat is sitting in my freezer right now, and I need to try it. Well, why don't you bring some? And I don't, because you said they taste better than. The, I've never tried wild turkey. Oh, I thought. Mm -mm. Well, is it the wild pig or whatever? The hog is more. Yes, is delicious. It's, it's better than the. I think so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we count on you. you know. Okay. Okay, so you have that spread. Mm -hmm. I Look how this came out nicely. Yeah, yeah. And I'm just going to um, take the whip. Get rid of all of this. Well, the lid was already off. Mm -hmm. I made a mess. Watch your elbow. Yeah. And I'm just going to fold this in. So what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to put that sorbet in, and then you're supposed to put it in the freezer for 15 mm -hmm. minutes. We're going to cheat we're, a little bit. We're cheating a little yeah. bit. So I'm just going to mix this in, and I'm going to layer this. Watch your elbow so you yeah, don't I make will. a mess on your black shirt. I'm just gonna layer this in, and then you just put it in the freezer and let it harden up, and then it pops right out because of the aluminum foil. Whoa. And look at that. 
Uh, Look, Susan made that beautiful. Yes, she did, and it's begun to melt just a little bit, but yeah. this is just ready whipped with some fresh strawberries. Look how Isn't that beautiful. gorgeous? We look professional. I wanna, I'm scared to death to cut this. Scared to death. Yes. <laughs> you can do it. Yeah, it, it takes a little more force than you think. Yeah. You got it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm just going to layer this in here. And then we'll just stick it in the freezer. And the bowl will be mine to lick. Mm. Yeah. You can always lick your fingers. Oh, for sure. Well, Look at that. That was so I will so say yummy. the sorbet is uh, a little bit expensive, so. Did you get some of the white, too? Oh, yeah. What do you think? Mm. I, uh, That's Wanda was looking delicious. at this. Wanda was looking at this recipe a while ago, and she said, "My granddaughters are coming. I'm fixing that." That is light week. and refreshing. Mm -hmm. If you want a nice, light, refreshing, not heavy dessert. Yeah, sorbet isn't it known to cleanse, cleanse the... your palate? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Delicious. It's a winner. We did it again. We did it again. We're great. We are great. No. <laughs> And when we fix something we bad, we'll tell, tell you. Us. What's the worst thing we fix? Those devil eggs. The devil eggs, for mm -hmm. sure. Mm -hmm. And a couple other things along the way, are like this. But yeah. we can give this. This is a winner. A hundred percent. Yep. Okay. <laughs> well, the information is coming up on your screen. If you want to email us, we'll send it to you. If you want to write to us, and it is on uh, Pinterest. So there's many ways to get this, and it is called the uh, strawberry sorbet sensation. And uh, we'll know if you just say sorbet, okay? All right. That information is coming up, and then I want you to meet my guest, uh, Mr. Paul Popov, with more stories than we can ever handle on this program. But you've got to hear what God is doing around the world. Stay with us. If you would like a copy of today's recipe, just write to the address on your screen. Or you can email your request to artheline at rippy.org. Well, I attended a lot of missionary services growing up, my dad's church, and it was always an exciting time. And that's why I like to bring them uh, to you, to the audience uh, out there all over the world, really. And so I'm very happy to introduce to you uh, Paul Harlan Popoff, and he's certainly been all over the world. Welcome to Homekeeper, sir. Thank you so much. Glad to have you. And what a story. What a story. Uh, can you describe what it was like as a five-year-old boy to have your dad taken out of the house, uh, probably in a very violent way, and then you didn't see him again for 15 years? It was a moment that uh, will be difficult to forget. Uh, it was a very violent knock on the door at four o'clock in the morning. The secret police stormed into our little apartment in Sofia, downtown Sofia on Rakowski Boulevard and uh, demanded that they see all the letters and correspondence and whatever we had. They turned the apartment upside down and uh, my mother Ruth was wondering what is going on, why we have not done any crime. Uh, well, we just have a, a few questions we would like answered because of the accusations that some people say that uh, your husband is a spy. So they took my daddy away, but they promised that they will bring him back in the evening. They were just a short questioning period. However, as you said, it took 15 years. They lied, and the communists are very well known for not only being able to lie with a straight face, but they are also able to distribute the lies. Yeah, if you just uh, joined us, uh, there's nothing wrong with our lighting. Uh, our, we're keeping our guests kind of in the shadows because we, we do not want to show his face. He goes all over the world where it can be a little bit dangerous, and so uh, we certainly uh, want to cooperate with that. You um, eventually became a journalist, right? 
what was it that was the uh, experience with your dad you thought well I don't want to be in the ministry I don't want to be a pastor so you went for journalism what was it that got you into the ministry the the uh, it is a, a big jump uh, because when I was 20 years of age that is when my dad came and I was very politically active as a young man mm. in Sweden in Stockholm where I studied at the university and uh, these uh, studies led me to understand and become a specialist on Marxism and Leninism and uh, political uh, activity was a part of my uh, political agenda. I wanted to become a politician as well as an ambassador mm -hmm. for Sweden eventually. Uh, however, when Daddy arrived on the New Year's Eve 1963, when I don't know if you have been to Sweden, but when it is really a lot of snow in Sweden, is a very beautiful country. And uh, at midnight, and uh, they, uh, uh, all the Lutheran churches in the country ring their bells. Ooh. And, uh, and uh, Sounds good. <laughs> ring in the new year. And uh, uh, this is the moment where my daddy came down the stairs from the airplane. He was wow. the only passenger on the plane on New Year's Eve from Bulgaria, and we could not believe our eyes. And to be able to hug my dad at that moment, uh, after knowing, not knowing was sometimes for a long period of time whether he was alive or not, because he was in a very, very harsh Stalinist uh, gulag. Can't they, even imagine what that reunion was like. It was a heavenly reunion. I believe that one day, when we go to heaven and we hug our Heavenly Father, it will be something similar, almost as nice as when that moment that uh, I finally got a dad back again. What kind of condition was he in uh, physically and he, even he, mentally and emotionally? He suffered a lot, uh, not only during the time of uh, when he was in the Belenev prison uh, camp where uh, hard labor was uh, something that took a tremendous toll of the 12,000 prisoners on this island in the Danube River be between Bulgaria and mm. Romania, uh, only 4,000 of the 12,000 survived. And Father was fortunately uh, one of them, thanks to many, many people who pray. And I encourage people dramatically to remember the persecuted people today and to pray for them as well as send letters to them and postcards and so forth, reminding them that they are not alone, that we Christians care. Oh, wow. We, we need to... We need to hear that for sure. How many countries have you been in? 92. And where are the pockets of the most uh, persecution for Christians? I have recently been in a country called Eritrea where many people don't even Never know. Never heard of that. Where it is. It is uh, south of uh, Egypt, Sudan, and, and north of Ethiopia. Uh, probably the most gruesome dictator really? beside uh, the Nur North Korean uh, country, they are having 2,000 Christians in prison, some of them in uh, containers, shipping containers, just because they are believers and, and, and trust in Jesus Christ. And the, the world doesn't seem to care, doesn't seem to know. Even we as Christians don't pay attention enough to uh, the situation of our brothers and sisters around the world, which hurts me because I think it hurts Jesus Christ as well, because it is a part of the body that we should pay more attention and not be as selfish and as self-occupied as we are very often. You yes. are so right, and that's why I'm thankful for Christian television, that you can come on here even though we're not showing your face, uh, but you can tell us firsthand you've been there. Yes. You know exactly what's going on. and Unfortunately, I'm not very good at telling it. The, I wish there was somebody who spoke the, the English language much better than I do uh, that can express it in more uh, eloquently. Uh, my accent, and I must jokingly say I hate people with accent, but uh, <laughs> it is a Bulgarian, Swedish, English accent that can be sometimes a little difficult to to understand, but I hope people will forgive me. I certainly believe they're understanding you, and I would never say a word about anybody's accent. You speak several languages, I speak one, so mm. I'm, not, I'm not allowed to uh, make uh, a... <laughs> unfortunately, English is not one of the top languages. <laughs> 
if we could do this in Swedish, it would be much easier for me in Bulgarian. Yeah, you know, I want to really concentrate on what they're doing to women. But before we get there, around the world, um, you, you've mentioned maybe what is kind North, of a North Korea is the most, uh, there is probably about 30,000 brothers and sisters in prison in North Korea. Eritrea, number two. Iran is pretty high up on the list. Iraq, Su Syria, and uh, many other places that I uh, don't have time to mention right now. But my job is to go there and visit the families, not only helping the pastor who is in prison, but also the children, the wife who sometimes, like my mother, had to uh, endure three years without food, without op opportunity to work in Bulgaria because she was a wife of a spy. And that's what they accused your father of? Yes. Was a spy? I just uh, was in China in an area called Urumqi, uh, a town called Urumqi in the western China. With, it is in the Uyghur Republic. And I had a wonderful opportunity to meet a lady who's 35 years old with two young boys. Gurli is her name. Her father, uh, her husband, uh, is the pastor of an, uh, of an uh, Uyghur church. And uh, he is, was sentenced to exactly the same thing as my father, 15 years in prison for yeah. being a pastor, s accused of being a spy for America and England. Absolutely innocent and wonderful. Uh, but he, the, his problem is that he's not Chinese. He is a Christian, but from the Uyghur people, which is a people group in China, which is Muslim primarily. And uh, there is very, very few Christian believers there. I'm, I'm so glad you're on here because uh, you are an expert. We do have the website up. And this is um, Door of Hope International. Uh, and it's uh, D-O-H-I dot org. You can see it. On. Please write it down. Uh, take a look. Uh, this is a ministry that really uh, should should be supported. I think there's very few people in the world with the experience and the knowledge of uh, my guest today. And if, if you just tuned in, uh, we've got his face in shadow for uh, many reasons, but safety is one of them. Uh, I want to talk about what they're doing to women. And I'm going to show a picture that we, we really got off your website of a little girl on an auction block. I want you to take a look at this. And uh, this is, I, I believe it's ISIS, right? Yes, yes. Look at her face, friends. I, I almost uh, am speechless. Being auctioned off and it's perfectly, you know, it's all allowed in their religion. Is that not true? This is uh, uh, the Quran, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Uh, many people believe in that book, and uh, this has a very dramatic effect. We uh, usually say that during the communist time, uh, the most dangerous uh, ism was communism. Mm -hmm. But uh, during the Cold War, thanks to many of the Bibles and radio broadcasting and, and efforts that many people were involved with together with us, uh, I want to mention Brother Andrew, I want to mention mm -hmm. Richard Wurmbrandt and other. We uh, made a campaign from the 60s up till the Berlin Wall came down to destroy this ism and change right. the heart of the people who lived in those communist countries, who believed that communism would bring mm -hmm. paradise on earth. Today, it is militant Islam, a very dangerous cult that is filled with hate, filled with um, a demonic... We, some people ask me, how can these people cut the head of Christian people yeah. in Libya and other places? And I can only say that the reason is because they are possessed with a demon that, can, uh, that is doing that through them. And well, this is yeah, I agree. It is a spiritual yeah. warfare, but the ultimate goal is to change their hearts, to prevent young right. people from being there. And this is the only solution in the long term and we as Christians like in the Cold War we play a very very important role right. in changing those hearts because the Word of God is so powerful that it's the only way to achieve success. Tell, tell the audience how smart these some of these ladies are that have, they have been kidnapped right mm -hmm. Um, and uh, not educated. That's where every American woman ought to thank God 
we can we can be doctors, lawyers, and anything that we want to be. And these nations will not even educate these women to the point of reading. Yeah, especially the ESCD women mm -hmm. who are living in the Sinjar area. Uh, they um, are a target for a lot of this uh, uh, ISIS uh, atrocity uh -huh. or barbarism. Uh, they are, however, smart. Uh -huh. And uh, just an example I heard a few weeks ago when I was there, we have a home for them when they, we rescue them that we uh, are able to take care of them, give them counseling and treatment and, mm -hmm. and uh, show the Jesus love, uh, hug them and, yeah. and make them feel comfortable. Um, the story that I was uh, told, uh, it was kind of an interesting. Uh, first of all, they don't, uh, for many, several months, they didn't take care of themselves. They didn't go take bath. They didn't wash their hair. They yeah, they do don't want to be desirable at Absolutely all. Absolutely not. Uh, secondly, uh, they uh, said that they were uh, not able to sleep. So they, uh, they were very tired and needed to see a doctor. So the the captors took them to the medical doctor and, he, and they said, well, what can we do? We can't sleep at night. Well, the only thing I can do for you is to give you some sleeping pills. So he prescribed some p sleeping pills and gave to them and they brought it home. And they had a plan. The plan was to put those sleeping pills in the captors. <laughs> I love those ladies. <laughs> and uh, when this uh, captors fell asleep so deep that they couldn't wake they up, away. they just get away. And uh, we rescued them and brought them to the home in northern Kurdistan. And uh, later, after three, four weeks there, then the, the German government is willing to take them on uh, and, and continue to, to, to treat them in, in, in Germany. Uh, how thankful I am to the Lord for your ministry and uh, ministries like that. And I don't know, the Holy Spirit guides you, you know, where to go. There's so many there's so many places well, where the persecution is going on. It is, it, is, it is about 10 countries that we specialize in, and that is where the harshest persecution is taking place. And our job is basically to focus on those. We don't go to Kenya. We don't go to many places where there is a lot of missionaries and a lot of Christian churches because they don't need us. We are needed in the areas like in Libya, for example. Do you know that there is only 32 believers in e Libya? 32? 32. There's not a single church other than uh, an old Anglican church in Tripoli, and the rest of the country doesn't have one single church building. And uh, the 32 believers need our assistance, help, and uh, compassion. And uh, fortunately, because ISIS went to Libya, now several of the missionary workers have left the country and only a handful are still in the country. We need to pray for them, and we need to, to, one of my job is to actually recruit missionaries to go to those countries where there is very, very few believers and where there is no church. Is it hard to recruit them? It is not easy, it is not easy. But God is good, God is faithful, and through the, your help, thank you so much for allowing me to come to Florida here and share this testimony with you. I'm, uh, I'm humbled. I'm humbled to be with you and, um, and Together, the great work you're doing. Together in his ministry is what my pl I always sign my letters. Together in his Amen. ministry. And I am so glad to be together with you on that. We are just about out of time, but we, we, we need to remember, because I get very angry, you know, with ISIS and mm -hmm. this kind of thing, but he's not willing that any should perish. No but that they all come to repentance. I want to t tell you that uh, this uh, homekeeping program is so important because you are reaching a lot of the uh, ladies in, in, in this country and around the world through various medias. And I want to say that if we want a strategic plan, we should help the women in Muslim countries to win the kind of statues that we have in the West. Amen. And, uh, and through the women in the Iran, in Saudi Arabia, in other places, the Islamic doctrine will not survive. Amen. Just like the communism is more or less dead today, that will happen to that militant uh, That is cult. so good. Hey, thank you so much for educating us. And if you're coming back this way, I'd like to have you come back. Uh, you stay with me. I have a couple things to say before we have to say goodbye.
Martha Lean would like you to keep the following information handy. You may contact Homekeepers by writing to Homekeepers, P.O. Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758, or go to www.rippy.org. Remember, we always enjoy hearing from our viewers, and we thank you for your support. It's such a, an important thing for me to bring missionaries to you. Uh, probably you would never know about them. They, they probably wouldn't come to your church. But that's the beauty of Christian television, that we can bring those things right into your home. And I'm certain that your heart has been touched uh, to hear of the unbelievable things going on around the world and how Christians are being persecuted. And there's one thing you can do above anything else, and that is to pray. There's nothing in the world like the power of prayer. I hope you'll remember my guest today and put him on your prayer list as he goes into Satan's territory. I mean, this is heavy duty Satan's territory, but God is so much greater. As I was uh, thinking of the places he goes and the fact that we kind of have to keep his face in the shadows, I thought of what has been uh, described as the greatest missionary hymn ever written by Margaret Clarkson. And she had... Uh, her own missionary experiences and, and they're kind of revealed in those lyrics. So send I you to labor unrewarded, to serve unpaid, unloved, unsought, unknown, to bear rebuke, to suffer scorn and scoffing. So send I you to toil for me alone. So send I you to hearts made hard by hatred, to eyes made blind because they will not see to spend though it be blood, to spend and spare not. So send I you to taste of Calvary. As the Father has sent me, even so send I you. Friends, let us not forget those around the world that are holding up that banner of the cross. We need to support them financially and we need to support them with our prayers. I hope you will do that from this day forward for my guest today. And I hope you'll join me next time, remembering there's no higher calling than that of a homekeeper. God bless you. If you should miss a homekeeper's program, you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN Programs and then on Homekeepers.